So James Webb Space Telescope might have just solved another important mystery of the universe, the mystery we refer to as reionization. The unusual period that lasted for approximately 1 billion years, during which time the universe transformed quite dramatically. And intriguingly, this was one of the primary missions for the James Webb, because for many years the researchers could not figure out why the universe transformed early on. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss reionization, discuss the solution to this mystery, and possibly find the conclusion to this scientific saga. And let's find out exactly what was described in a recent paper, and basically what all of this means. But let's start with a bit of a cosmological history. And let's start with this NASA picture showing us the evolution of the universe. Now, today we're actually only concerned with the first billion years, specifically the period known as the Dark Ages and the transformation period that followed afterwards. And during that first billion years, the gas in the universe experienced at least two different stages of transformation or two different stages of phase transition. The first one happened approximately 380,000 years after the Big Bang. This was a period known as recombination when basically super hot plasma suddenly turned into gas because the universe was expanding and was cooling down. And this process resulted in the famous CMB, cosmic microwave background, literally the oldest light in the universe, because at this point all of the super thick plasma now turned into hydrogen gas and allowed some of the first light to travel through. Before that the universe was basically opaque and the light could not travel far. But also at this point we reach the period known as the Dark Ages. It's called that because, first of all, there are no stars yet. But second of all, because a lot of gas that's present is neutral hydrogen. And by its nature, neutral hydrogen only allows some of the low energy photons to go through, but any light that's able to ionize gas is actually going to be absorbed, thus becoming invisible. And so, for example, some of the first stars that started to produce ultraviolet light, and actually mostly UV light, not so much of anything else, would most likely have all of their light completely absorbed by neutral hydrogen, thus appearing invisible from a distance. But as this neutral hydrogen was absorbing all of this light, it was becoming ionized, which would then allow light to pass through much easier. And so this period of dark ages lasted between 150 million years to 1 billion years after the Big Bang. What this simulation sort of shown us what possibly happened. So basically we had these tiny bubbles of reionization forming everywhere in the universe and eventually spreading more and more, eventually becoming larger and larger, at some point joining in, which then led to the reionization of the entire universe roughly around a billion years after the Big Bang. And the reason we know it's a billion years is because of the observations from various quasars. If we look at quasars at a redshift of 6 or more, they usually have certain frequencies missing from their spectrum. Or basically they'll have certain higher frequencies that seem to have been absorbed by neutral hydrogen. But if those quasars are seen much closer to us at a redshift of less than 6, they usually show us all of their wavelengths, suggesting that neutral hydrogen was already gone. And since to ionize hydrogen we actually need very specific energy, requiring ultraviolet light or something even more energetic such as X-rays or gamma rays, whatever caused the universe to change so much must have been really powerful. But that's where the mystery started. Cosmologists were not certain what exactly was responsible for most of these effects. What exactly caused the Dark Ages to end and what reionized everything. But there were always at least three main candidates. The first obvious candidate was Population 3 stars. Ridiculously powerful but possibly very short-lived first stars in the universe that were made out of only hydrogen and helium could have also contained hundreds if not thousands of solar masses in mass and very likely produced a tremendous amount of UV light. They've never actually been seen yet, but their existence is implied based on the observations of various supernova remnants that then resulted in the formation of second generation stars. Actually one of the main missions for James Webb Space Telescope is to finally find these stars somewhere, but so far nothing. And so because these stars produce so much UV light, they were always the primary candidate. But most scientists do not think that it was only population 3 stars. They were very likely the first to start ionizing everything and possibly started the process of reionization. But because generally they would only exist for maximum a few million years, 
it's extremely unlikely that all of the reionization was done by these types of stars. And so today it's believed that they must have started the reionization for the first few millions of years, but something else took over afterwards, and actually something entirely different very likely caused the entire universe to change dramatically. In other words, to create these bigger bubbles that would then join in and would spread across the entire universe, something else had to be responsible. Now, some researchers believe that maybe it was really massive, really powerful early galaxies. But the thing is, even though we see some of them, the numbers are just not there. There are not enough of them in the early universe to explain anything. However, we do see quite a lot of quasars. Actually, over a million have already been discovered in various locations in the universe. And quasars are essentially very, very bright galaxies powered entirely by a really, really massive central black hole. And because they're generally extremely efficient at producing all sorts of powerful light, with many of them existing before reionization, some scientists believe that maybe it was quasars after all. But based on recent observations by various telescopes, and specifically James Webb observations, it was discovered that the numbers were just not high enough. The researchers were hoping to find a lot of massive black holes in the early universe, but as you might have learned from one of the recent videos, they've actually discovered almost the opposite. The number of quasars and the number of active galaxies does not seem to be as high. Which suggests that, despite their power, quasars also very likely only contributed a little bit to the total reionization, but were definitely not the main culprits. So if not quasars and not population 3 stars, then what could it be? And the answer that was recently discovered might be just a little bit surprising. It seems to be galaxies, but actually galaxies that we generally do not have around us. Here we're talking about a very specific type of dwarf galaxies that seem to be extremely rare nowadays, but potentially were extremely common billions of years ago. And these types of dwarf galaxies were actually only discovered not so long ago. For example, one of the previous videos in the description talks about these mysterious green P galaxies, or these very, very compact green galaxies discovered by citizen scientists in the mid-2000s. And it did take a while to explain what's going on here. In essence, these are really compact galaxies producing a lot of stars, but also producing an enormous amount of ultraviolet radiation. They're often tens if not hundreds of times brighter in the UV light than anything else. But much closer to us, there are at least two of these galaxies that possess very similar properties as well. The one whose name you see right here, approximately 650 million light years away from us, a galaxy that's practically invisible in optical light, but lights up dramatically in the ultraviolet. Here's actually a colorized picture of this, basically showing us what it kind of looks like. And a galaxy known as Harrow 11, that's only about 300 million light years away from us, but is also extremely bright in the UV light, basically representing one of the brightest UV objects in this part of the universe. And though finding these types of galaxies close to us is kind of rare, they've always been theorized to exist at faraway distances. And they're actually known as LCEs, Lyman Continuum Emitting Galaxies, responsible for producing super powerful emissions. Or in other words, galaxies that emit a lot of ionizing light, mostly a lot of UV light, but also a lot of X-rays and a lot of other frequencies that tend to ionize gas around them. Now, because we've only seen a few of these galaxies out there, and because their numbers were relatively low compared to anything else, Nobody expected these galaxies to be responsible for most of the ionization. But in the recent study using observations from the James Webb and looking at the famous galactic cluster known as Abel 2744, the researchers found a kind of a chunk of very powerful LCE galaxies, specifically eight of them, that were actually really faint in optical light, but super, super bright in the UV producing a ridiculous amount of ionizing radiation, several times higher than anyone expected. And though each of these galaxies was at least 100 times less massive than the Milky Way, overall they seemed to produce several times more ionizing radiation than any of the galaxies nearby. And because so many were found in such a small volume of space, it kind of implied that these types of galaxies were potentially all over the place. We've just never really seen them before, because none of the telescopes were powerful enough to see that far, and because even in this case, it was actually due to gravitational lensing that were able to detect these tiny galaxies. So for example, in this image, you can even see the outline of the gravitational lens, which magnified the light from these galaxies so much that they finally became visible. And based on the ionizing photons coming from these galaxies, 
researchers discovered that they most likely produced enough ionizing photons to completely reionize the entire universe. In other words, if enough of these galaxies were present everywhere, they very likely were responsible for all of these micro-bubbles that eventually joined in, reionizing the whole universe. And because these galaxies were much smaller, they would produce smaller bubbles, reionizing the universe in a much more homogeneous way instead of large chunks. And that's of course exactly what's been observed by many scientists for many years. Reionization seems to be more or less homogeneous and very likely happened as a result of much smaller bubbles. In other words, the discovery of these eight really distant dwarf galaxies, combined with the discovery of very similar galaxies close to us, and the discovery of these green peas, to some extent, very likely provides a definitive answer for the problem of reionization. Even though it possibly was started by population 3 stars, it was mostly done by these types of galaxies that produced ridiculously powerful ionizing radiation, much more powerful than anything around us today. As a matter of fact, the only reason these galaxies are even green is because the ionizing radiation inside is so powerful that it causes ionization of oxygen produced by various supernova, which then starts to glow green, turning the entire galaxy green. And this was probably very common in the first billion years. But with time, as galaxies evolved and as they combined into larger objects, and of course as the star formation settled down, these types of galaxies became extremely rare and the galaxies we see around us, such as the Milky Way, became much more common. And so once again, the James Webb Space Telescope was able to help us understand how objects we're not familiar with very likely reshaped the universe, just because of their sheer numbers. They were most likely everywhere. But this is of course just the first observation and more additional confirmations will be needed to make this a fact. And so we do have a few more observations coming up, specifically of a galactic cluster known as Abel S1063 and the observations of the program known as Glimpse. And so if those observations also discover similar objects at relatively similar distances, the conclusion is going to be pretty obvious. Reionization was caused by dwarf galaxies very similar to objects we discovered in the last few years, such as for example those green peas. One mystery down, a few more to go. And so, at least for now, this is probably one of the more important discoveries coming out of James Webb when it comes to cosmological studies. But it will definitely take at least a couple of years to confirm all of this. And so, until future discoveries, or until James Webb discovers something else really surprising, or maybe something super exciting, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, Support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt featuring James Webb as one of the designs on one of the t-shirts. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.